Good morning, good morning, good morning. Blessings, Dubai. Hello, Prophet Jamila. I was thinking and praying about you this morning. Hope you're well. Hello, Veek, Stallings, Cody. Good morning, Atlanta. God bless you. It's a new day. It's a new beginning. God is good. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. <laughs> God is good. Hello, Mitch and Pilar from Hollywood. Our associate pastors at Awakening House of Prayer rocking it. Hello, nations of the earth. Hallelujah. St. Louis, Fort Worth. A new radical month. Yes. Hello, Glenn. God is good. It's a new beginning. It's official. What's past is past. Yesterday is gone. It's a new beginning going to be good. Share this with your friends. Invite your followers. We're going to start in about 30 seconds. Jesus. Not time to look back. It's time to go forward. It's a new season. Good morning, Netherlands. We're not looking back. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. decisions and we're moving on today's devotional jennifer leclaire here author of our devotional mornings with the holy spirit listening daily to the still small voice of god senior leader at the awakening house of prayer founder of the ignite network we're moving ahead we're moving ahead together we stand together we are moving ahead together the old is gone it's past it's dead we're plowing into this today today's devotional i am your helper and here's what i heard the lord say when you get busy or have a bad day and forget to visit with me. I miss our time together. I look forward to our relation, to our fellowship. Although I am always with you and always thinking about you and always interceding for you, I long to hear your voice telling me what's on your heart and requesting my help. I am your helper, and it delights me to help you. Remember, especially on the busy days and the bad days, that I'm here to help. I'm always here for you, and I can turn your bad days into good days if you'll focus on my goodness instead of on the busyness and the badness. Praise God. Today's scripture references James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, Psalm 27, verse 13, and Psalm 145, verse 9. And the prayer started for today, your love touches my heart. It's difficult to imagine that you love me so much. Will you help me remember and ask to ask you, the one who loves me, the one who delights in me, and one and the one Jesus sent to help me for your all-sufficient grace? Thank you, Lord. I tell you what, I'm pressing into this not looking back. Thing. 
It's a new beginning. It is a new day. It's a new beginning. It is a new day. It's a new beginning. If you've not seen it manifest in your life, go ahead and declare it anyway. The reason why some of us haven't seen new beginnings is because we won't stop looking back. We continue looking backwards. We continue trying to hold on. I'm blasting this thing today. God is all over this thing today. It is finished. It is done. We are moving ahead. There's no looking back. There's no turning back where there's no giving up. There's no going backwards. Father, we praise you and we thank you today because you are the God of new beginnings. You are the God of our tomorrows. You are, yes, the God of our yesterdays and the God of today, but you have a greater tomorrow for us. Our latter shall be greater than our past. Let's just worship the Lord. We thank you and we praise you this morning. We thank you and we praise you this morning. We thank you and we praise you this morning. We thank you and we praise you this morning. We thank you and we praise you this morning. We worship you. You are the one and only living God. You are the true Messiah. You are amazing. You are absolutely wonderful. You are so gracious towards us, God. You are magnificent and you are holy. There is no other God worthy of comparing to you. You are set apart. You are magnificent. You are awesome in power. You are mighty in battle. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You have all our days written in a book. You see the end from the beginning. You love us. You've got a plan for us. There is just nothing that's too hard for you. The new beginning is not hard for you. It's not hard for you to usher us into that new place. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you this morning, God. We thank you and we praise you. Oh, Jesus, would you help us today? Thank you, Lord, for the new beginning. Come on. I decree and declare a new beginning, a fresh start, a new beginning, a fresh start. Oh, some of you have had false starts, but the Lord is giving you a fresh start. Yeah, I heard that, Lord, that some of you have had false starts from the enemy. He tried to trick you. He tried to wooed you. He sort of enticed you to step out into a thing before God's perfect timing, and you had a false start, but God's not mad at you. God's not upset with you. You had a false start, but now it's time for the new start. It's time for the fresh start. I said there's a fresh anointing for your fresh start. Oh, there was a false start. There was a, a misstep. Some of you, some of you didn't move even when God told you to move. Some of you, you, you were supposed to have a fresh start in the last season, but you didn't step out because the enemy deceived you. He made you think it wasn't time. He had circumstances rise up round and about you to cause you to take a pause, to cause you to hesitate. But that fresh start, it's coming back around with a new wind. I said, there's a fresh start and a fresh wind coming. I can see it. You just got to let go. You got to let go of those things which are behind. You've got to let go of those things. Some of you've got to let go. So, oh Lord, I'm all over the place. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus, to pray. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus, to pray. Help me, Lord. I'm just seeing so many things in the spirit. Some of you are, are in one stage and some of you are in another. Some of you are trying to get toward the end of a season. Some of you have already begun a new season. I'm telling you, there's a fresh wind. Wherever you stand right now, whatever point in your progress that you are at, there's a fresh wind. There is a new season coming. There is a there is a letting go. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. I just I just hear so many things happening in the spirit. Let's just deal with one thing at a time. Let's just deal with one thing about the time the Holy Ghost has gone to meddling in some of your lives. Let's deal with the letting go. Father, help us, God, to fully let go. Yes, I see that, Lord. Some of you think you've let go, but you've not let go. And that's why you're not entering into the new, because you've not really let go. You've, so you've thought you've let go. You've told people you've let go but you've not let go. You, you, you're confessing that you let go. You're trying to let go, but you've not let go. Uh, you, you, you've convinced yourself that you've let go, but you're not, you're not, you've not let go. Lord, help us, Lord, to sever the ties that bind. Help us, Lord, to lay an ax to the root in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to willfully walk away, really walk away, really, really walk away from those things you've called us out of because we can't enter into until we've come out. We can't step into until we've left the old. God, help us, Lord, to be willing, really willing to let go of those things that lie behind, to let go of them, to just completely let go, not grasping on uh, with our fingertips, or just trying to, to just, just preserve something from the past season. Oh, Lord, I thank you that you'll always preserve what needs to be preserved, but we're not going to hold on to a false hope of a resurrection of something from the past that we wish we could hold on to. We let it go. 
hope. We sever the ties, God. Just do it. Just do it, God. Sever it in the name of Jesus. Some of you, listen, some of you, the reason why you've seen some betrayal, the, the Lord told me the betrayal is for your betterment. is because you would not let go. It's because you refused to let go. It's because you could not bring yourself to let go. Therefore, the Lord, uh, the Lord had to allow some things to happen to get you to let go. But the betrayal was for your betterment. I said the betrayal was for your betterment. You feel like you were betrayed, but it wasn't even really betrayal in the strictest sense of the word. It's just a feeling you had. You felt like they left you. You felt like they cut ties. You felt like they let go because you were supposed to let go and you wouldn't do it. And so the Lord allowed some things. He allowed it for your betterment. It feels like a betrayal. But when you go forward and when you see the next season of your life, when you understand the mercy of God, you're going to celebrate it. And you're no longer going to see it as a betrayal, but you're going to see it as a blessing. That betrayal, that feeling, it's for your betterment. It was the only way that God could get you to let go of the thing. It was the only way that God could get you to, to stop holding on. It was the only way was to arrange circumstances where people that, that, that were close to you, people you depended on, people you worked with, people that you thought you knew, they turned sour on you. They turned in another direction. They stopped returning your, whatever it was. It felt like a betrayal to you. It felt like a betrayal, but it was for your betterment. And when you get through this season, when you truly decide to let it go and to forgive and to bless, you're going to see that that betrayal was a blessing in your life because God has something better. He has something bigger. He has something stronger. He has something with more influence, with more increase. I'm telling you, just stop looking backwards. Dear God, would you stop looking backwards? Stop looking backwards. God, help us to stop looking back. Help us to stop looking back. Help us to stop looking back at the betrayals. Help us to stop looking back of the blessings from yesterday that we still wish we had. God, help us to let go even of the blessings of yesterday, of the influence of yesterday, of the increase of yesterday, because you've got a new increase. You've got a new realm of authority for us. You've got a new influence. You've got something new, 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 new. And we can't grab it as long as we're holding on to the old. Would you help us, Lord? Would you help us, Lord, to sever the ties, to cut the cords? Oh, Jesus, would you help us once and for all to do what Paul said, pressing past those things which lie behind, pressing past them, pressing past the past. We've got to press past the past. The past is a stumbling block for so many of you. It's a stumbling block. You are stumbling over your past. Dear God, would you just let go? Help us let go, Jesus. Step into the new. Come on, step into the shift. Step into the increase. Step into the fresh anointing. Step into the fresh start. Oh, the Lord says, if you'll embrace the fresh start, I'll, you'll find that I've given you a running start. And you'll not be one who is lagging behind any longer, but you'll be one who surpasses your enemies and you'll leave them in the dust. Because as you've stood in your past and refused to move forward out of paralysis, out of, out of angst, out of hurts, out of wounds, out of uh, uh, disillusionment, as you've stood there in that past, wallowing in the past, wallowing in the past, wallowing in the past, says God, your enemies have, have circled around you. They have encamped around you. But if you'll come into my presence, if you'll leave the past and enter my presence, if you'll leave the past, says God, and enter my presence, you'll find my angels are encamped around you. And they will war with your enemies because you've been weakened. Some of you, oh, dear God, should I, Lord wants to say this. Now listen, don't get mad at me. This my, I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. Oh, shakata, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. You stepped out. You stepped out. You stepped out. You stepped out to step in. You stepped out to step in. You've stepped out to step in, but some of you, the Lord shows me you're refusing to step out. You're refusing to step out. You're refusing to step out and your enemies have been camped around and about you because they want to see your demise and because you won't step out because you're paralyzed in that place of pain, because you're paralyzed in that place of pain. You're paralyzed in that place of pain. You're shocked. You're dismayed. Uh, your enemies have been camped around you, but if you'll step into the presence of God and out of the past and into the presence and out of the past, 
past and into the present, you will find that you will see a heavenly host that's encamped around you because you fear the Lord. And those ones that have even risen up against you with slander and with backbiting and with gossip and with underhanded comments, those who those those ones the enemy has used in this season to try to hold you back and hold you down. The Lord says, if you'll bless them, I will bless you. If you'll bless them, I will bless you. If you'll bless them, I will bless you. If you bless them, I will bless you because I am a God of blessing. I am a God of increase. I am a God of a fresh start. Oh, if you'll just, if you'll just let go, 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 go. God, help us to let go. Help us to sever the ties. Help us to refuse to look back. Some of you need to just refuse to look back. You know why you don't have eyes in the back of your head? Because you're not supposed to look back. Praise God. Come on now. Hallelujah. We thank you. We praise you, Jesus, because you're good and your mercies endure forever. There's a fresh wind blowing. There's a new beginning. There's a fresh start. 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 There's a fresh start for you and a fresh wind, a fresh anointing. Some of you need to just disconnect. Oh, come on. You know what somebody told me yesterday? Somebody told me yesterday about something. They said, enjoy the clean air. You know, sometimes there's some spiritual pollution in your atmosphere. Sometimes there's some spiritual issues, some spiritual stench, some spiritual uh, pollution is the best way I can describe it. Some of you are in atmospheres. Some of you are in relationships. Some of you are in workplaces where the atmosphere is polluted and you need to get up out of that so you can enjoy the clean air because there's all kind of wickedness. Some of you are surrounded by wickedness and some of you need to be kingdom culture changers and release the kingdom in those at polluted atmospheres and, 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 and allow, allow the Lord to use you as a cleansing agent. But some of you are coming up under oppression. Some of you, it doesn't matter what you do and what you pray. You're in a place with hard hearted, stiff necked people. And some of you just need to move. Some of you just need to leave. Some of you need to get into some clean air and enjoy the clean air so that you might breathe again. Some of you feel like you're absolutely suffocating. You're suffocating. You're suffocating. There's no clean air there. It's all oppressive pollution. The reason why is because there's a wickedness, all kind of strife. You know, the Bible says is that where there's where there's strife and envying, there is a confusion in every evil work. And if the Lord's not giving you, listen to me now, if the Lord's not giving you a word to change it, then get out. You're not called to change everything. You're called to change what God's called you to change. The reason why some of you can't get your fresh start is because the air around you is polluted. There's a spiritual pollution around and about you. And it continues to drag you down. It continues to, to bring oppression on you. Jesus, would you give us discernment? Ah, shaka tarabashte shoko tom brashta. Shoko toraboshta shaka tarabashte shiki tim brashte kiti. Oh, shoko toraboshte shi. I believe that if you're called to, if you, if you cannot leave a thing, you cannot leave your family, you're called to change your family. But sometimes you're in a church that's polluted. Sometimes you're in a workplace that's polluted. Sometimes you're in friendships that are just polluted. You know, there's some things you can't leave. God will give you the grace to, to, to withstand, stand, and change a thing. But if you, you know, the Bible, you know, the serenity prayer, God, give me the wisdom uh, to, to know the difference between what I can change and what I can't change. You know, the, the grace to, to, to endure what I can't change. I can't remember how, how it exactly goes, uh, but, but you know what it is. The, you know what it is, that serenity prayer. Sometimes, you know, if you can't change a thing, you're beating your head against the wall. Get out. Let it go. It's polluted. There's so much spiritual pollution. Lord, we thank you today. We thank you today. I'm trying to provoke you. By the Spirit of God. Listen, I'm trying to provoke you by the Spirit of God to leave the past behind. Some of you, God has been dealing with you for years to let go of something and you won't do it. And you complain and you moan and you groan and you're sad because you're not stepping into the new. But you cannot. It is impossible to step into the new without stepping out of the old. I'm trying to provoke you by the Spirit of God. Don't get mad at me now. I'm for you. I'm not against you. I want you to be led by the Holy Ghost. Father, give us to discernment. Give us discernment today. Give us discernment today to cut the cords. I just see some of you wrapped in cords and on those cords is written past. I, I see literally, I see a picture of some of you are bound. You're bound in cords and on the cords is written past, 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 past. You're in bondage to past, 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 past. 
And some of you have eagerly and sincerely tried to step out of the past, but the people from your past won't let you go. You've got to break soul ties. I'm pray teaching today. I'm pray preaching today. It wasn't my intention, but I got an unction from the Holy Ghost. Listen, it's time. I see some of you are literally in bondage to your past. And people will not let you go. They do not want you to let go. You got to cut the cords. Break the soul ties. Break the alignments. It's toxic. It's toxic. Tear down the toxic alignments. Tear them down. Tear them down in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord. 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 Some of you need some clean air. You've been breathing that spiritual pollution for long enough. You know why you can't hear from God? Why your prayers don't seem to work? It's because you're in a polluted atmosphere. God's told you to get out. And you're not getting out. Tear down the toxic alignments. Break the soul ties. 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 Somebody needs to say bye-bye to their past. Hallelujah. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to the past. Say goodbye to the past. I'll do a webinar or something on breaking soul ties. I cannot get into that right now. That's just a too long of a thing. Too long of a thing. Hallelujah. Bye-bye, past. Be gone. It's holding us back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need Prophet Vanessa or somebody to remind me to do a webinar on breaking soul ties. Can't get into that right now. It's too long of a teaching. It would not do it justice. Someone would take me out of context and you'd make a mess. Bye-bye, past. Bye-bye, past. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Bye-bye, past. We're not doing this anymore. We're not going to be held in bondage to our past. I literally saw... People wrapped in cords that said past. Dear God, help us. I thank you, Lord, that you show us, God, what we need to disconnect from. Show us, God, in Jesus' name. Bye-bye, past. You know, the Bible says your ladder shall be greater than your past. That's a promise. It's a promise. So why do we want to hold on to our past? It's like something must be inherent in the human nature to hold on to things. Some of you are holding on to dear life or to something that's dead. And you're dragging around dead things. And you wonder why you don't feel the life of God. So, Father, give us the, give us the, give us the grace and the anointing to cut those ties, to sever those things. In Jesus' name. I would like to do a Facebook Live today on breaking soul ties or a webinar. I can't do a webinar that fast. I'd like to do a Facebook Live on breaking soul ties. I would like to do that today because I'm gone tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I would like to do that today on breaking soul ties. So I need someone to remind me of that because I'll get busy and forget. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to do that later today. Somebody will remind me. Breaking Soul Ties. It will be on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Jennifer LeClaire. I'll try to send out an email on it, but I might just send the replay tomorrow via email. But go get it live so you can ask questions. Can't ask questions on the replay. That's the only disadvantage of the replay. Still great information, but you can't ask questions on a replay. Emotional witchcraft, yeah. Amen. Break Soul Ties. Breaking soul ties. Unhealthy soul ties. There's healthy soul ties and unhealthy soul ties. There's soul ties I have in my life that they're, 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 they're healthy. They can any time turn unhealthy, though, if you don't keep it in Christ. The soul ties are birthed out of, out of, out of uh, relationships born in Christ. You're all right. But otherwise, otherwise you're not. So we'll talk about that later today. I'm going to do a, a Facebook Live and a, and a, and a Periscope. Uh, on that later today. Listen, I want to give you an opportunity uh, to, to, to hear a few announcements. I have something I want to share with you at the end of this broadcast, the prophetic word for the month of November, and I want to pray into that just a little bit with you. Uh, it's time to, to, to see something new. 
Amen. So stick with me here for just a minute. I want to read you this word, uh, the prophetic word. Some of you may have heard it yesterday, but I want to pray into it a little bit with you because it kind of goes along with what we're talking about today. So I want to give you an opportunity to sow. I need uh, to uh, to uh, to do many things the Lord has told me to do. I must do them. It's not that I need to do them. I, I must do them. I must do what the Lord has told me to do. And so I need uh, I need to uh, put this before you so you can prayerfully consider sowing into the vision the Lord has given me. Amen. The Lord has given me a vision uh, to expand prayer in the nations of the earth. Dr. Sharon Stone prophesied over me that I was to go into nations and establish beach, beach heads, not just to visit nations, but to establish beach heads, to establish centers. And so the Lord has put on my heart to uh, to proliferate uh, a, a prayer movement, a house church movement, uh, and, and many other things, television shows. Amen. I've got a huge vision. Uh, that the Lord has given me now that I have officially uh, stepped away from that role as senior editor of Charisma, I'm able to give my life fully uh, to the gospel of the kingdom, uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ and advancing his purposes in the earth. Uh, so now I'm full on board and I'm running as fast as I can. So I need some of you to partner with me in prayer. I need you to sow your prayers into my ministry. You can go to prayforjennifer.com and, and sign up for my uh, prayer army. Uh, I'm updating that at least once a week. I also send out a newsletter. So if you, I have a Facebook group, but if you're not in Facebook, that's okay. We send out a newsletter once a week also uh, because we know a lot of people have different preferences. Look, I need your prayers. I need your prayers. I need you to pray for the provision of the ministry. I need you to pray uh, for for wisdom and strategies. I need you to pray uh, for the the resources, staffing wise, and all of these things. But please consider it's real easy. It doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, just sow your prayer. Pray for Jennifer dot com. If you want to sow a seed into the ministry, please feel free to do that. We need prayers. We also need financial support to do what God's called us to do. This prayer call, I'm I'm exploring new platforms. Uh, we just launched a blog talk radio show, uh, which I'm ex um, I'm piddling with. I've not been able to crack the, the nut on, on when to do that or how to actually put these uh, put some of these prayer calls on there but we're working on that in our staff because that will reach a whole new audience. These prayer calls bless people. These prayer calls, because it's because it's the Holy Spirit, I take no credit or glory uh, for it. I take no credit, no glory for it. No credit, no glory for it. But I want these words to get out to the nations and that's one more platform. And if you know of another platform that we can put these calls on, uh, they're not, they will not be live necessarily, but they would be uh, uh, recorded, let us know. Uh, we're exploring every avenue to get these calls out to the nations. If you want to sow a seed into the ministry, please do jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You can become a partner there. Uh, we need your, your partnership to do what God's called to do. You are partakers of the rewards uh, of the labor of this ministry when you sow into it. Amen. And you will see a blessing. Everybody that has partnered with me always reports increase and in blessings in one way or another in their life. Jennifer Leclair org slash donate you can also go to uh, paypal.me slash jennifer leclaire paypal.me slash jennifer leclaire it's great for internationals paypal.me slash jennifer leclaire uh, you can go and, and sow a seed there uh, you can also use the uh, text to give text uh, the word pray to 754-701-2161 Seven zero one two one six one. Text the word pray, or you can send a check or a money order to PO Box three nine five three, Hallandale Beach, Florida three three zero zero nine three nine five three, Hallandale Beach, Florida three three zero zero eight. Actually, but it'll get there either way. Uh, and I thank you for that. I thank you. I do pray for my partners and my donors, just as I pray for all of you every morning. Uh, but I do pray for my Ignite members, my partners, and. Uh, my donors I want to make you aware of a few things coming up. Uh, the uh, Awakening Blaze Vision Call is on November the 7th. Uh, that's at 6 p.m. If you want to know more about Awakening Blaze, awakeningblaze.com is the website, uh, and you can uh, you can go there and and uh, and read about it. But if you want to be on a live phone call and hear the Vision Cast, you can join that. Uh, you can go to event uh, jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. 
jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. Uh, go and sign up for that. It's, it's free. It's just a phone call. Uh, November the 8th, I'm with Larry Sparks, uh, Supernatural Shift, Unlocking Your Miracles. Uh, it is going to be a, a key for many of you to, to be able to unlock that which God has promised you, the miracle that's uh, promised you in his word, that he's promised to your heart. Uh, go sign up for that, jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. These are free calls. If you're an intercessor in Florida, join me and Apostle Kim alone for the uh, uh, intercessory prayer call over the state. Uh, the Act Like Men Conference is coming up. All these things are at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. Uh, the Ignite Network's Prophetic Vision. Now, last night we had a regional leadership uh, candidate call uh, with Ignite. Uh, and we're install installing regional leaders because the, the, the movement is proliferating uh, rapidly. And uh, and so uh, we are, uh, you know what, uh, uh, we are going to uh, be, I'm trying to look at your comments. I don't want to look at your comments while I'm, while I'm, uh, while I'm trying to read these announcements, Ignite. So Ignite is a prophetic network. It's a, it's really, it's poised to be one of the most significant uh, prophetic movements uh, in the body of Christ uh, uh, in in my day. Uh, you know, I, I've been ordained under Christian International. That is the one of the most, the most in my eyes, the most significant prophetic movement in the world. Uh, they've infiltrated the world. There's 4,000 uh, different churches in their network. They've, uh, you know, equipped thousands thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of prophetic people uh, and I believe that the ignite prophetic network uh, can be one of the one of the one of the most significant emerging prophetic uh, movements in the world right now and ignite is already touching I don't know like 20 different nations uh, and so we had a regional leader call last night if you want to learn more about our vision uh, you can go to ignitenow.org you could also sign up for the ignite network prophetic vision for 2018 phone call uh, and if you sign up for these phone calls and you're not able to make them live you will get a recording emailed to you so that you can listen to it uh, and so uh, you don't have to worry about like it's better if you can be there live so you can ask questions obviously but if you cannot be there live just sign up because you'll get the recording within a couple of days after that and you can listen in on that as well amen mentoring and prayer and intercession uh, these are this is filling up quickly uh, this is filling up quickly you're going to want to go to school the spirit TV if you want to be part of that I'm not mentioning much about it this this week I will be doing a also a, a webinar on prayer so you can look for that pastor Austin and I recorded that yesterday and I'll tell you more about that next uh, next week probably amen there's all kinds of stuff going on as I always say get involved in what you want to get involved in get involved in what moves your spirit moves your heart get involved in what's going to bless you we have so many things Things going on. I know some of you are at every single thing that we do, and, and that's awesome. Uh, if if you can uh, can do that, uh, then then do that. But just get involved in what uh, what uh, what blesses you. What I'm going to start doing on select days, uh, I'm going to begin doing some things uh, in, in the early evening, probably around six six thirty. Uh, with I'm going to be doing declaration calls, and I haven't really figured out what to name it yet. I'm not announce this publicly uh, you know I always tell you guys things first because you're my special ones that get up with me this early in the morning uh, but I'm going to be doing some evening uh, sometimes I'll do uh, you know evenings with the Holy Spirit but uh, I'll do some of those but you know really I found that uh, it, it doesn't work for me as well to do an evening uh, uh with the Holy Spirit kind of thing, uh, there's just not as much wind on it for me. It's like, it, it seems like the mornings are really my prime time for that. But the Lord's been talking to me about doing, a, you know, nightly declarations. And so I'm still praying through that, what that looks like. I, I plan to try to do one tonight just as a test run, probably around six or seven. Uh, uh, and so I just think we need to declare some things. You know, what we do in the mornings, a lot of times we're petitioning heaven uh, and we're in a more a priestly mode and I feel like the Lord really wants us to rise up in a kingly mode you know the Bible says we're priests and kings unto God so I hope to do that tonight uh, I don't know if my plans for this uh, soul ties thing will interfere with that uh, but I do feel the wind of God on that but I'm really wanting to do this this declarations uh, you know make some declarations have a topic and really press into declarations over these different uh, different topics amen so that's what's on my heart uh, to do. And this will be just the same. It will be on Periscope and Facebook just like now. It'll be audio only because I cannot 
I cannot pace. And you know what? I don't know if you've, anybody has ever seen me pray in person, uh, but I pray like a mad woman. I fling my arms and I stomp and I skip and I jump and I run and 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 and, and, and I make hand motions and I can't hold hold the. Uh, hold the phones in front of my face so you can see me. That's why the screen is black. You have to look at this more like a radio broadcast uh, than, uh, than a you know, video thing. I just can't, I can't, you'd be seeing the ceiling, you'd be seeing my feet, uh, you'd be seeing everything but my face. Uh, and so it's just not practical for me to do that. Or you wouldn't hear me because I'd set the camera stationary and uh, you would just see, uh, you just see me kind of flip by every few minutes and you wouldn't be able to hear me. Uh, so, but I want to share this uh, prophetic word with you for the month of November. I want to pray into that a little bit with you. I've got to pull it up here. Aramashte, uh, where did it go? Hallelujah. Where did it go? Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Where are we? All right, here it is. I want to read this to you. And we're going to press into this in this month of November. Uh, this will be going out uh, uh, on just different various channels. Uh, it was on my Facebook page yesterday. I did a little teaching on it. It was also, I think, on uh, Periscope yesterday. So you may have seen it, but many of you didn't, so I'm reading it again. Uh, here's what I heard the Lord say. What do you see? If you can see it, you can have it. Once you see my promises through the eyes of faith, really see them. You can obtain them. You can pull them down from the spirit realm into your life's reality. Once you see yourself as who you really are in Christ, you will begin to move in my love, my authority, and my power. What do you see? Don't see yourself as a grasshopper. See yourself as undefeatable in my son. What do you see? I am challenging you to look through the lens of scripture with the eyes of faith and only believe. Nothing is impossible for the one who believes. If you can see it, you can have it. What do you see? Amen. What do you see? The Lord asked four times in that prophetic word, what do you see? Four times he asked, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? We want to see through the eyes of Jesus. We don't want to see through the eyes of the world. We want to see through the eyes of Jesus. We don't want to see through the eyes of the devil. We want to see through the eyes of Jesus. We don't want to see through the eyes of our past. Come on. What do you see? God is trying to get you to stretch your faith. Some of you, he's given you prophetic dreams, prophetic visions for your life. He's given you promises. What do you see? Do you see the promise? Do you see the purpose? Or do you see the pain and the problems? What do you see? Do you see the promise? and do you see the purpose or do you see the pain and the problem shift your focus shift your vision shift your eyes shift your shift your purview shift it we've got to see what God wants us to see the Israelites were like grasshoppers in their sight and so they were like grasshoppers in the enemy's sight you know God the devil knows if you see yourself rightly because he listens to your words he watches your reactions what do you see so let's just pray into that for a minute what do you see I want to challenge you the Lord wants to challenge you this month to press into this that doesn't mean we're not still radical. It doesn't mean there's not just a mega move. It doesn't mean we're not still authorized or fierce, that we're not riding the wind and dreaming wild. It just means that the Lord is, high, is, is focusing us in this direction because it's the next step on our journey. Now, I've got a word for 2008 beyond blockbuster. That's one word. And dear God, I've got to remember to, to press into that. But I've got a word for 2018 that I'm not going to yet release. Uh, I'm going to wait until uh, probably December, mid-December, and I'm going to be doing a, a, a free webinar on, on how to press into this 2018 word uh, but right now I want us to focus on what do you see because God is leading us he's led us all year long into this progressive revelation and here we are what do you see so father I thank you that when you ask us a question, it's not because you don't know the answer. When you ask us a question, it's because you want us to reflect and, 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 and meditate on what you're saying and answer thoughtfully. You already know, but you want us to see what's on the inside of us. So, Father, help us to see like you see. Help us to, to, to see through your eyes, through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of Scripture, not through our, 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 our past, our pain, our hurts, our wounds, our disappointments, uh, all of these things that try to hold us back back from your great and precious promises. God, help us to see through the eyes of faith. What do you see? 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 Be take thought to what you see. Pay attention to what you see. Your eyes see like 5,000 advertising messages a day. These things that have come through your eye gates. Oh, shakata. These things that, that you let in your eye gates affect your faith. They affect your spiritual vision. Everything around us is so visual. We see so many images every day. Be careful about what you see. Be careful about what you look at. 
God has a great and precious promise and a outstanding plan for your life. I want you to see it this month. I want you to see it. God wants you to see it. So, Father, help us to see the way that you see. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You can't, you can't unsee what you see. That's right. You also, can't, and you also can't see what you don't see. There are certain things that the enemy tries to hide from us. We don't see them because we're so focused on the wrong thing. The enemy wants us to look at what he wants us to see. God wants us to look at what he wants us to see. So there's a battle for your vision. There's a battle for your sight. What do you see? What are you going to choose to see as part of it? What are you going to choose to see? What do you choose to look at? You have a choice what you see it to some degree. Some of you, God's trying to pour out revelations, but the enemy is pouring out revelations. And so whose revelation are you going to be mesmerized by? We need a shift in our sight. Lord, open the eyes of our heart and help us, Lord, to see the way that you see. There's a competition for what you see. There's a competition for what you're going to look at. Are you going to look at the devil or are you going to look at God? Amen? Amen. Praise God. So we're going to press into that this month in the prayer call. You know, the prayer calls aren't themed necessarily, but many times uh, we'll have a we'll have a, a pressing in on these. So we're going to press into this, what do you see, as led by the Spirit of God. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go back into worship. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Amen. What do you see? What do you see? And I encourage you today to, to let go of the past. Let go of the past. Let go of the past. I stopped myself short. The Lord was showing me something that I didn't need to say earlier in the call. And I stopped myself short because I didn't want it to be taken wrongly. And it probably would have been. Just because the Lord shows you something doesn't mean you need to say it. Take that as a lesson in the prophetic. Just because you see something or hear something doesn't mean you have to say something. You know, there's a sign in the Atlanta airport. It says, if you see something, say something. Well, that is not proper prophetic protocol. Just because you see something doesn't mean you have to say something. So I stopped myself short, stopped myself dead in my tracks and shut my lips because I knew that I didn't need to say it because somebody would have taken it the wrong way. Many of you wouldn't have, but some of you would have. And therefore, it could have, it could have brought harm to somebody when the Lord was trying to set people free. Amen? So you got to use wisdom. you got to use wisdom. Amen. Let's go back into worship. I'm going to be in Pigeon Forge tomorrow with Apostle Ryan Lestrange and others. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If you can get there, get there. The Prophet Vanessa will be with me. I'm still waiting on my pumpkin cheesecake. I'm still waiting on Baby Prophet to make me some whatever it is she can make me. Something chocolate. I tell you what. These two ladies know how to bake. Amen. They know how to they know how to bake. Of course, oh I better stop. I better stop. Praise God. Let's go back into worship. Let's go back into worship. There's so much good things ahead, guys. So much good things ahead. Just hold on to God. It is a dangerous art. Sir Atheist, God's going to encounter your heart with his love and rock your world because he loves you so much that he died for you. I invite you to come back on this call and let him minister to you. 